If you enjoy watching Common Ground online, please consider making a tax-deductible donation at lptv.org. Lakeland Public Television presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. This is a private sale and this is considered a wild plant. In other words, the site isn't prepped uh, for uh, planting trees. But as you can see, this guy is a great steward of the forest and he's really cleaned up his woods really nice. And uh, for the two days, I'll put in uh, 2,400 trees for him. And these are uh, uh, all containerized trees. As you can see, they're uh, contained in their own earth system. These will grow right after they're put in the ground. Some people will buy the bare roots, and as you can see the difference between the two, the bare roots are bigger. The downside to the, these guys is the root system, you gotta really be careful that they're all in the ground when you plant them. And the bare, trip, bare roots have a, like a three year cycle. The first year they seep, creep, and then grow. So for three years they're kind of not doing much. Where these, you plant them right away and they go, but they are smaller. Oh, this is uh, grown in uh, styrofoam cubes. So there's 200, uh, 250 in a cube, and these are grown right straight in the uh, outside earth system, uh, outside in a farm. These are grown in Bedora. These are grown actually in Canada. And these are nice to plant. You don't have to worry about the root system at all. And so uh, these are very fast and very easy to plant. I really like these trees versus the bare roots. Better success. Then you don't have to worry about jay rooting because if one of these roots sits outside the hole as you plant it, it'll dry it out and kill the tree. And this is the main root that you really got to protect here, that, this one right here. So, yeah, you got to know all this stuff. And as you can see, I use a sharpshooter shovel when I plant. This is my medium weight shovel. I have two shovels. I have the lightweight here because I'm in sand. And then this is my medium weight shovel. And it's just a number 14 spade. But then I hire a welder to weld this metal plate on the back. And then to strengthen it, we weld it here, or I asked them to weld it. First one that I uh, had this friend make for me, it snapped right here. And so then after that, we decided, well, we need to make it stronger, more durable. And it adds weight to the shovel, but there's no flex or bend to the shovel when you plant it. So when you hit the ground and move it, the earth moves, not the shovel. There's no flex. I grind these down quite often. And these I've just wired brushed down each night. So far this year, I've only had one bad plant site, which was a lot of rocks. And I literally had to take the bends out of it, each plant. So it was kind of getting depressing and taking a long time to, but, but that was in the Lake of the Woods. And here comes our own one. Well, this is what Monty planted three years ago. And the progression, the growth is just remarkable. When the storm came in here, it came in straight micro bursts so you had these down drafts that came in and it would take out an area like this and lay everything down but look at how this has come in now these are all seedlings that Monty planted the seed that are on the ground that was under that canopy are all laying there dormant so these seeds are now going to start sprouting and you're going to get natural regeneration occurring along with our plantings when you do it manually instead of by machine, you can place your trees where you want them and not wind roam. So when this comes up, it's going to look natural. And as tree plantations, when they put them in machines, it looks so mechanical and there's rows. And we want it to look as natural as possible. So, you know, 40 years from now, it's going to look like Mother Nature put in this stand of trees as opposed to just like a cornfield. So the stewardship of putting your trees back is really important. And, and that's a progression that, regardless of a storm, you're still always planting, putting in varieties, and replenishing what has been lost just through natural mortality. A lot of this would have regenerated itself, but he's really customizing it really nice. So he's really got a nice diverseness, even with the shrubs here at this landing here for the grouse. And uh, when you're out here working, you really get in tune what's around you. You really can hear stuff that you may not normally notice. 
And out here, as you heard earlier, all the geese coming into the lake. Well, as you can see, I switched to left hand now. And when I learned to tree plant, I found out that uh, early on that uh, you grab your shovel by the shaft here and slam it. Because if you grabbed it by the handle like this and slam it, you get all that pressure here on the top of your forearms and you get terrible tendonitis. Where here, you now your arm is turned and you don't get that slam slam. And uh, boy, I tell you one thing, you get tendonitis just once and you'll, you'll learn to grab her down by here. My back has been kind to me and I've been able to actually last 30 years. And the trick with the trees is to get them at the right depth. And this is where they came out of the soil, so that should be how deep you should go, is right here. So every tree I grab, I grab at the height that I want to hit the ground. Yeah, so this is a, a year that I've really planted a wide variety of species for private people. So far, I've dropped, what, 7,400 I counted this morning. I planted in the last week. And I have one more contract, which I'll fill tomorrow and be done. I was looking at my counts and uh, that will be the least amount of trees I've ever planted. Even the very first year I started, and I started, we started as a team, we worked in the forest as a team, and you had your own individual boxes. The first year I learned to plant, I did 8,000. And so this year I'll hit about 78, 77, 7,700. So this will be the least. So my first year eight now, hopefully my last year. There's no, I wasn't gonna plant this year, but there's so many uh, private individuals that bought a lot of trees and contacted me and said, uh, please help us out. And so, yeah, I did that for him, so. Monty, how many trees do you estimate that you've planted in your <laughs> career? Well. I knew you'd ask me that, and so I looked on my calendar, and so far, not counting this year, I have 740,000 trees. Yeah, 740,000, so that's, that's a few trees. And that's uh, private and county. Majority, of course, is county. And I've done more bud capping on trees than I've planted. Because <laughs> I'll do about 100 acres, so you're talking maybe a, 80 to 100,000 trees a, a fall of bud capping where you take a little piece of paper and staple it over the top of the tree. So yeah, I've got my numbers up there. A lot of touching of trees. And, uh, and this technique is called sweeping the heel. So if you got a lot of stuff in your way, if I was just to slam my shovel in there, sticks and uh, um, the soil will get in your eyes. And I tell you, I've, I've had a dry seasons where I've had to wear safety glasses and they steam up. Yeah, you can see how these white pines have just been nailed by the deer. See the bud? There's no bud on it. It's just totally been eaten down. So then we put these nets up and hopefully that will protect it. Yeah, until it gets a certain height. But I'm doing all red pine here today for bud. And then as he has me come back in the fall, and bud cap to protect them. So. Yesterday morning we were, we were listening to sandhill cranes, and this morning it's Canadian geese. And what we have is a site here with jack pines. And this is the third time they've bud capped this site. Just because I've seen trees out here that have uh, three, three pieces of paper on it. And uh, when you bud cap tree, you pick the dominant bud. And then you, uh, your bottom, bottom staple is tight to the stem of the tree. Outside a pie. And that way you put up high one and if the deer take the first bite, they'll get a staple in the mouth. So that's a good thing. And this one is a tree that's played out. You can see that this section's dead. And this one I'll take over. So that's how she works. Bud capping keeps the deer, and they're, they're a smart animal. The first deer, they'll keep them away from grabbing it and eating it. 
and, uh, and then after a while, they kind of get acclimated to it, get used to it, and then they'll come in and pull on it. If there's a lot of deer, what I'll do is I'll bud cap, and then they'll have the plant skid, the bud sprayers, come in and spray the paper, and that works like a charm. The deer can't figure that one out yet. The plant skid is pig's blood and vegetable fat mixed together. They mix uh, vegetable fat with it because it holds the blood, it coagulates it and holds the blood onto the product, whatever you spray it on. They came out with plant skid and hoping that they could just spray it and leave it, but it does wear off. But when it's on the paper, it gives that paper a death smell forever. So the deer don't like it. But you can see out here, the success of these trees. These are really, I mean, the success out here is awesome. So it's obviously that the deer haven't been eating them. There's, there's a few that I find along the edges over in here that uh, the top bud, the dominant bud is gone. And so the deer have started browsing. These are between three to four feet apart. Even some of them are tighter than that. So that's why this site has a lot, a lot of trees. And as you saw my map, it's pretty easy to see where I've been. It's like a flag everywhere. And sometimes with jacks, they'll have multiple, multiple tops, so it's hard to determine which one to staple and protect. So then, what I do is I look for the biggest bud on the tree, and the forest growers will hire us to uh, bud cap, um, Norway's jacks and especially white pines. Deer love white pines. It's like cotton candy. You learn a lot about trees and their willingness and wanting to live. You know, you find a tree that dies here and a section off takes over and kind of get in tune with every sound in the woods. And uh, this one's been nipped by deer. This is the reason why we bud cap because as you can see, this tree has a nice diameter to it but yet the deer has nipped it several times and uh, taken off the dominant buds and a couple of its smaller ones. And so uh, this one is a typical of why I'm out here doing it. When you bud cap this, this section, it's hard to find really one that bud cap. And so I'll do that and hopefully the deer will leave it alone. Yeah, it's nice to see so few trees being browsed on. That's really nice. And uh, as you can see, as you came in, you saw a lot of a lot of trees already done. So probably tomorrow, I'll have done 60,000 out on the site already. You know, you think about this for me, I've nine years capping, eight years, 11, that's not quite 30, but you get to know it pretty good. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org.